enhanced turn work in process support. As you can see from the dialog on the right hand side, in CAMWORKS 2010 and previous versions, the only options you had were consider work in process and generate work in process. Well, that's now been changed in CAMWORKS 2011. As you can see now, we have the option of previous leftover from simulation or a bounding bar. If the bounding bar is selected, it will not consider work in process. If previous leftover is selected, it's going to consider work in process. And for simulation, there's options to select the operations for work in process, as you see here. So for example, if you don't want to consider the facing operations, you can simply uncheck them and then select OK, and so on. Turn rough, lead in, and lead out. We've now provided an option for both the lead in and the lead out to apply to all passes, the first pass only, the last pass only, or the first and last pass only. Simulation and step through toolpath enhancements. Simulate and step through toolpath from an open operation. This is really cool and it's a great time saver as well. We now provide an option where the user will perform a step through and or simulate toolpath directly within the operation parameters. This is extremely helpful whenever the user is going to temporarily make changes he or she wants to uh, quickly review them and then get right back into the operation parameters. Ultimately it saves time in validating the operation parameters. Let's see a demonstration on how exactly this works. Okay, so what I'm going to do is edit the definition of an operation and let's change the pattern to something different. We'll click preview. Now look over here. I'm doing step through toolpath without technically ever leaving the operation. Change the parameter once again. Step through. Let's try simulation. Again, I'm not really leaving the operation. As soon as I click on the close button, I'm right back into the operation parameters. Camworks Volume Mill. What is Volume Mill? Well, it's an ultra high performance toolpath plug in engine for high speed milling. Some of the key features of Volume Mill efficient toolpaths for open shapes intelligent slot milling and side milling options, fast machining of small pockets, and automatic feed rate adjustment. Okay, so let's take a look at your standard tool path. Tail wags a dog. Sharp corners increase tool load. Moving between cuts increases the tool load. Tool abuse in the red areas. Parameters must be set to survive the red areas, meaning that the, the feeds, the speeds, all have to be slowed down, and tools underutilized in the gray areas. Parameters are insufficient for the majority of path. Look at volume mill toolpath. No sharp corners, smooth, stress-free moves between cuts, constant material mo removal rates, establishes and maintains ideal machining conditions and machines and cutting tools operate within their sweet zone throughout regardless of the part shape. Let's take a look at some examples here. This is an aerospace job shop using 625 Inconel with a half inch 5 fluid end mill. Before and after. The before, a quarter inch axial depth of cut. Look at the after. 600 thousandths axial depth of cut. However, look at your radial depth of cut. On the before, it's 400 thousandths. On the after, it's set at only 70 thousandths. Now you might be thinking, well this is going to take a lot more time to machine. That's not true. The reason why is your RPM and your inches per minute have increased greatly. So before we're looking at 400 RPM, now we're at 3000 RPM. Look at our inches per minute, 2 inches per minute, and after with volume mill, 30 inches per minute. And what really counts here? Well, a couple things. One is the cycle time, and then the cost. 
If you look at the cycle time on the before, it took 35 minutes. After, it took 7 minutes. And before volume mill, they were only able to get 3 parts out per tool. Now with volume mill, they're getting 12 parts per tool. And your total cost is $3.75 versus not using volume mill at $15 a part. Tremendous amount of savings. And this is actual data from a manufacturing shop. Let's take a look at another example. This is a firearms manufacturer and they're using 6AI4V titanium with a half inch five flute end mill. Again, the axial depths of cuts are much greater using volume mill. However, the radial depth of cut is much less. Your RPMs are higher, but look at your cycle time, 30 minutes versus without using volume mill at 80 minutes. Now this is a big play right here. Four parts per tool before using volume mill and now 40 parts per tool after volume mill. Tremendous amount of savings guys. A Seattle area shop. Volume mill tool pass. Titanium. One inch axial depth of cut with 35 thousandths radial depth of cut. 600 surface feet per minute at six and a half thousandths inches per tooth. So what's our guidelines here? Well the surface feet per minute you can double it or triple the recommendation and then you adjust from there and it's likely upwards. Inches per tooth you maintain the recommendation. Upward adjustments are likely but never downward and axial depth of cut whatever part or flute length allows. The radial depth of cut, general guideline is 6% for harder materials and 40% for softer materials. Let tool life or cycle time priority be your guide. Where is volume mill located inside of Camworks 2011? Well, it's on the roughing tab under pocketing. You simply select the pattern, type as volume mill, and then the volume mill settings dialog box will be available.